the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, and the Arc de Triomphe. Icons like these have made France the world's top destination for tourism with over 86 million visitors a year. Students flock to France to explore studies in international business, medicine, pharmacology, and especially studies in the arts. With tons of programs in art history and film studies. Hello my people, my name is Beecham and today the SCORE channel is going to show you how to study in Le France. French bachelor degrees take three years to complete much like most other European countries. In fact, France is the country that created this LMD system of studies. Now, admission deadlines depend on where you come from. France has basically three ways for you to get into university. The first of these is called Parcoursup, which I think could be like a high-powered energetic soup that you eat before you do parkour. This method is for EU and EEA citizens only. For these applications, you have to finalize your choices in March and finish your applications in April. After that, we have the DAP or Demand this is going to be a tough video when it comes to pronunciation and stuff, so deal with it. This is for non-EEA citizens. These applications require extra inspection, and so they're going to ask you to apply earlier. You have to finish your application by mid-January. If your country is on the list of EEF countries, then you will complete your application online through the portal. Yeah, that's better. By the way, check out their YouTube channel. It has tons of information for how to complete this application. Now, if your country is not on the EEF list, you can still apply, but you have to do it on paper and take your application to your local embassy. The third route is for art studies, especially. Yeah, please get you have to apply through a different portal called Campus Art. For these applications, you have until the end of April. I was putting this video off because France is kind of complicated and it sometimes is hard to find information in English, but you asked for it, so this is for you. To study in France, you're gonna need at least 12 years of education, which is the norm in Europe. British A-levels and US high school diplomas with the right combination of AP courses are acceptable. You can also use any of the European baccalaureates or the international baccalaureate. You'll then need to get your official transcripts from your school and make sure that they're all translated officially into French. Universities will also ask you for a CV and they will also typically request a motivational letter or a personal statement. Other universities will ask you for additional essays just like the Common App does. Generally, applying to a French université is pretty easy, but when we start talking about the Grande École, these are like the Ivy League universities of France, things get a little more difficult. These universities are extremely competitive and people spend years preparing for entrance exams just to have a small shot at getting in. If you don't have a French baccalaureate with outstanding scores or a really impressive international baccalaureate profile, it's going to be very tough to get in. And you'd also better be able to speak French. We'll just get right to it. French is important if you're going to study in France. This is not like the Netherlands or Germany where you can study entirely in English at the undergrad level. There are many programs in English if you're looking to study a master's or a doctorate, but when it comes to undergrads, it's about as scarce as toilet paper at the start of a pandemic. You won't find any all English programs in the public schools in France. That means you could look for an all English program in a private university like the American University of Paris. So. How good does your French need to be? Many universities are actually pretty reasonable and they'll ask you to show a B2 level of French in order to get admitted. Now, this is typically true for first year admissions. Transfer students might be asked to show a C1 level. France understands that once you've moved there and spent a full year, your level will have increased. So you can arrive with a B2 level and start your studies and hopefully you'll improve after spending some time in the country. We talked about the exam that you have to take in the how to study in Canada video, but the DELF is the version that you have to take for the B2, and if you're looking for the C1, you will take the DALF. If you're looking to study in English, you probably will have to show a B2 or C1 level also. We would recommend taking the IELTS for studying in France. But what about living in France and speaking French in France? There's something of a stereotype that says that French people don't like it when people speak English or they refuse to speak English to other people, but that's not really true. It seems to be that that's based on a lot of bad experiences 
experiences that a few tourists have had and have vocally expressed on the internet. France gets more international tourists than any other country on the planet. Anytime you deal with lots of tourists, especially the big dumb American tourists, definitely tell your American when you are very impressed with old buildings. You get people that don't necessarily respect the local culture. Yeah! How far can we take this? And don't even make an effort to try to speak the local language. I see this in Peru all the time. So if you go to France, try to speak French. It's good for you, especially if you're gonna study there and live there for several years. I won't sugarcoat it. France is very protective of their language and they're gonna expect you to speak French whenever possible. And university studies aren't gonna go easy on you just because you're an international student. The language is not easy to learn. So I would rate the language barrier of studying in France as three extra long baguettes out of five. If you can handle it though, you're in for a really sweet deal. French universities are some of the most affordable in the world. The government subsidizes university tuition considerably, meaning that they only charge very tiny fees for EU residents. How tiny? How about 170 euros a year? Okay, but that's the EU price. Well, what about the international students? It's gotta be way more, right? If you're not an EU citizen, you still pay an incredibly low price of just 2,770 euros a year. That's even cheaper than what you would pay in a country like Spain or Italy. If you come from a place that has cultural ties to France, like say Quebec and Canada, you can end up paying the EU rate. Private universities in France do exist and they typically charge more. Still though, we're looking at a much more affordable country than any of the other ones we've covered. The cost of living, however, is pretty expensive, especially if you choose to live in a major city like Paris or Nice. In places like these, you could be paying over 1,200 euros a month just to survive. Smaller cities and towns, however, have more affordable prices and you can often get by on less than a thousand euros a month. So don't just focus on Paris. You might be able to find a better deal outside of a major metropolis. As far as finding a place to live in France, there is some support from the government if you've gotten a French government scholarship to study in the country, but everybody else has to find their own place to live. Most universities do not offer housing directly, but they often do have partners in the local area that can help you out. The most affordable option is to look for a student residence hall. In many university towns, you'll find that people have constructed kind of like on-campus dorms, but they're just not on campus, and you can get a good deal there. Once you've figured out your universities and you know where you want to live and you've got the money, it's time to go get your visa. France will only give visas to students who are 18 or older. Minors cannot apply. No, not that kind of minor, those kind of minors. Yes, those minors. If your university asks you to take an entry exam, you will be able to get a temporary short stay visa that lets you come to France for the purposes of taking that test before getting an actual student visa. But in most cases, you'll just get your acceptance letter and then you can start filing for your visa. France's visa process depends on every country and so the easiest way to tell you what to do is to tell you to just go to this website where they have a convenient visa wizard. All you have to do is plug in your country and the university that you're applying to, and it will spit out a list of documents that you need. Generally though, everybody has to pay a visa fee of either 50 or 99 euros, depending on where you come from, as well as pay a 200 euro a year fee to cover your health insurance. What a bargain. And you'll have to show that you have enough money to pay for university. And that, my people, is everything that you need to know to study in France. I'd like to take a moment to just say thank you to a research assistant, Derek, who helped me out with some of the research for this video, and the wonderful people of Reddit who gave me some support with finding information in English and helped me understand a little bit more about this process. France was complicated. Could not have done it without you. Make sure you're subscribed because we're going to have interviews with students in France and those who are on their way to France so that you can learn a little bit more about this process and what it's like to study in France. So until next time, I'll see you next week.